So you're a low elo league player. That makes you no different than 99% of the people that play this game. No, but actually though, 99% of the people who play this game are plat or below. But you're also a low elo support player in League, which means that every day you wake up, you make the conscious decision to continuously suffer through the worst pain and agony that any man can go through. So naturally, you want to climb. You look up guides on how to climb in League on YouTube, and every single video that is up is made by a player who is diamond or better, or by an actual company, and every single one of their videos spouts the exact same terrible vague knowledge and they're all just so unhelpful they're out of touch and don't understand how terrible low elo is to actually play in so now this is where I want to step in and actually help low elo players specifically in the support category because for over two years I was hard stuck in silver 3 or just known as the top 63% of players and the whole time that I was down there I learned a lot but I never actually applied what I was learning until I started this project and I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to do it and make a video off of it so in less than a month of play I went from the top 63% of players to roughly the top 10%. All solo queuing support. I'm really really close to hitting plat and over the next week I'm gonna try to stream my games on my road to actually hitting plat 4. So if you want to tune in and see that, the link to my Twitch will be in the description. I want you to understand that it is possible to climb and get better as a solo queue support player in low elo. And here are the 10 tricks that I used to climb. So step one is to make a new account. Whatever account you're using right now to climb, just drop it and make it your for fun account, collect skins on it, play events on it, and make a new account for just ranked. You see, once you spend enough time in a certain rank, your MMR gets locked because the game thinks that that's the rank that you should be. And once you get locked into that rank, you lose and gain the exact same amount of LP for each game that you win or lose. But if you create a new account, which will be unlocked, you will gain so much more LP than you will lose because the game is trying to figure out which rank is supposed to be yours. This resulted in me basically gaining 24 or 25 LP a game and losing like 7. And take into account the fact that when I started climbing, my win rate was about 80%. I essentially flew through bronze, silver, and half of gold like they just didn't even exist. Tip number two, do not play enchanters. First of all, because they're cringe. And second of all, because enchanters make good teammates great but they cannot make bad teammates good. It does not matter how much you heal or shield one of your teammates. When you are playing in these low elo games, absolutely nothing that you can provide on an enchanter will help them perform better because it is still up to their raw mechanics to make plays. So if you want to know which supports I used to actually make plays and climb, I almost exclusively played heavy engage supports. The reason that I like to play these engage supports is because you get to decide when team fights happen, who to focus in those team fights, and you get to make so many easy picks for your teammates. You get to take control of the game not with kills, but with deciding when those kills happen. And good decision making is something that not a lot of low elo players have, so making the decisions for them is what will help you climb. The only time that I can ever think that playing an enchanter is a good idea is if one of your teammates locks in a character that can immensely benefit from being pocketed, something like Master Yi or Vayne. That is honestly the only good time. Tip number three. You can win most low elo games in champ select. My champ pool is something like 8 or 9 characters, it's nothing huge. But if you look at my match history, every single champion that I pick in every game is for a reason. Like 90% of the time, that reason is to completely counter the enemy support. But other times it's their jungler or their top laner, but I'm always just trying to counter somebody on their team. 
If they pick immobile characters bot lane, bam, Pike. If they pick Blitzcrank, bam, Alistar. Or any kind of really hook champ Alistar is good into. They have Master Yi, Leona. They have a Morgana. Psych, I'm never playing against a Morgana because I permaban her every game. And I should mention during this tip to learn a really good blind pick support because there are some games where you just can't counter the enemy, which is why I play Thresh into almost every game where I don't know exactly who I'm playing into or who I'm playing with. But there are way more champions than just Thresh who are good into those blind picking situations. Tip number four. Start roaming if you haven't already. The best advice that I can honestly give you on learning how to roam, and this is how I learned, was to pick up Bard. It is literally built into his kit to just roam around the map and be a nuisance. My mentality around roaming is that a bad support will only support his ADC, at least during laning phase, but a good support will support his entire team no matter what point in the game it is. Top lane can benefit from roams, mid lane can benefit, it helps junglers a ton if you gank with them, so you can essentially get 3v1 or 3v2 situations. Roaming is very very important because you need to make sure you get everybody ahead on your team if you want to win. You cannot just focus on getting your ADC fed and hoping and praying that they will carry the game. It will not work. Tip number 5. Get your vision score up. Now in those other climbing videos, this is where they would say something super generic like ward more or buy pink wards. But this channel isn't like the other channels. So as a support you need to remember that your pool of wards is almost unlimited, while the laners that you're playing with have a very small pool of wards that they can use throughout the match. So like a full minute before even any objectives are up, you want to make sure that there's good vision of that. You want to make sure to leave wards around other people's lanes, and not just your own, because you want to make sure that they don't die on their own once you're gone. And as long as you have the gold and one inventory space available, always make sure you have a pink ward on you, even if you have one down. Because this goes for pink wards and normal wards alike, even though you have one down or three down, you still want to just keep placing them over and over again. Just because you have the max place down doesn't mean that you shouldn't place more. As you and your team are moving around the map, you need to move those wards as well. And also never be afraid to recall if it's just for wards. Doesn't have to be to buy anything or regen. Recalling for wards is perfectly fine. Tip number six. Outside of laning phase, follow your carries. You hear that and you may think, oh this is because you want to follow the person who is the most fed on your team so that they can get even more kills and do even better in the game. But no, actually that is not the case whatsoever. Remember, I played in this elo for multiple years, which means that I studied the people who actually play in that elo as well. So this tip is purely psychological. The reason that you don't want to follow around people who aren't playing well in your game is because low elo players have a very fragile mentality. The players who perform terribly in a game have a very very small chance of contributing anything so they will more often times than not just push lanes by themselves and get solo golden XP and you should let them do that. That is probably the only way that they will get back into the game because when they're behind they don't have the mechanics to beat people who are doing better than them. And the reason you don't want to follow them into those lanes where they're pushing by themselves is because you want to let them get that solo golden XP. So instead you want to follow your carries or the people who are performing the best in the game because low elo players like to develop an ego and as soon as they start performing well they think they can just 1v9 the game every single time no matter which champion they're playing therefore you need to make it your job to either protect them help them engage on the people that they're trying to chase after or help them disengage once they get caught players who are performing well really like to throw away their lead and lose you the game so follow them around and make sure sure they don't do that. Be a babysitter. This next one is kind of like two tips, just having to deal with when you play. Tip number seven. Once you start playing a bunch, try to figure out which time of the day is the absolute worst to play. Sometimes you may not have a choice if you're really busy with school or work and that can force you to play at a certain time every single day if you ever want to play. 
But if you have the freedom to play whenever you want, start figuring out when you lose the most games during the day. I can already tell you, as a matter of fact, any time past midnight is just an absolute coin flip. There is no skill involved in any game that takes place after 12 o'clock. But for you, wherever you are, you may discover that it's worst to play in the mornings or weekend afternoons. I don't know, there's just so many players on League, and a lot of them may have like specific times that they like to play the game, and if the time that they get on happens to be the times where you lose the most games, you can avoid those players by avoiding the times that they play. And just to add on to this tip, do not rage queue. If you're losing a bunch of games, stop playing the game. My rule for every single day that I get on is I will play two games, and if I do not win either of those games, then I will stop and take a very long break. I'll either play something else or do anything really, and I will come back to the game thinking of it as a brand new session, play another two games, and if I win either of those two games, then that's when I will continuously play and try to climb. You just get a feeling for how the day is gonna go based off of those first two games. So do not continue playing if you lose those first two. At least that works for me. It helped me climb really fast because I would lose barely any games. Tip number eight. Change your controls. I feel like nobody talks about this, but the controls in League of Legends or any MOBA are terrible. So as weird as this sounds, hop into a practice match with just yourself and try doing things like combos, using summoner spells and wards and whatever, and figure out which buttons are actually the best on your keyboard and mouse for you to use instead of the default controls. Like, I personally think that flash, ignite, and ward buttons are on the absolute worst keys that you could ever put them on, so I changed them. Ignite on mouse 4, flash on spacebar, and wards on mouse 5. There are very high elo players who don't play with the default controls, and play with much weirder things than I have right now. It's completely up to preference, but you should really take the time to figure out which controls are best for you, because I promise there will be certain opportunities that you have where the default controls will hinder you greatly. Tip number 9, let's finally get into a sort of mechanical thing, and not so much of a just position and game knowledge thing. When you're fighting 2v2s in the bot lane, you always want to ignite earlier than later. The enemy ADC will use heal like 90% of the times in the fights when you engage, if they have it, and igniting early can almost cancel their heal, resulting in way more 2v2 victories. You just want to make sure that you're not using your ignite at the end of a 2v2 to try and take a kill or finish off damage. You want to use it to cancel heal. Tip number 10. Understand the CC timer and your ability cooldowns. I see so many enemy supports who fail to chain CC properly, and things go from a 5 second CC chain to like 2 seconds because they waste all of their cooldowns in just a moment of time. When you have 2 stuns in your kit, you have to wait out the full duration of one of your stuns before you hit the other to maximize the time that the enemy is stunned. And this is really easy to do because of the white bar above people's heads when you stun them. But it's very important to realize that there's other people on your team who have stuns too, it's not just you. And if they stun somebody, then that makes your stuns guaranteed because they can't move. Which means that you don't really have an excuse to not maximize the amount of time that the enemy is stunned. So just an example that I want to give, say you're playing Blitzcrank Jin, not an uncommon lane whatsoever. Your Jin has a super long range root, and there may be a time where he lands the root on a super vulnerable character, but they're really far out of range. You can use your W to run really fast towards the person who's stunned, but you don't want to hook in the enemy player until the Jin's root timer is almost all the way gone, so that by the time you do hook in the enemy, the Jin will have hopefully stepped up enough to begin auto-attacking them. You need to remember that you don't do the damage, and your teammates do. And just to continue off of the idea of you not doing any damage, when you blow all of your cooldowns on somebody, but don't kill them, and you happen to have them run away from you and you're chasing after them and so is your team behind you, do not auto-attack them. Auto-attacking freezes your character 
and you want to be as close as possible while your abilities are refreshing so that as soon as they come off of cooldown, you can land another guaranteed stun. It's just as simple as understanding which one is better. Would you rather deal like 80 damage with your auto attacks because you do no damage over the course of like 3 seconds while they're running from one tower to another? Or would you rather knock them up for a full second, which will result in your ADC being able to shoot them for 300 damage, and your ADC will most likely get the kill instead of you? You just need to maximize the potential that all of your abilities have every time that you use them. Do not frantically spam buttons and waste all of your stun. And do not frantically stun already stunned players, especially when your teammates aren't around. Give your teammates the time to walk up and start doing damage by maximizing CC. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of the video. If you found anything that I said useful, or if you just enjoyed the video, a simple like or subscribe would mean a lot to me. And if you'd like to see me actually use these tips that I talked about so that you could better understand them, I'm going to try my best to stream my League games over the course of the next couple weeks while I try to hit plat. And once I do finally hit plat, I'm going to take a break from League because this game has taken a bigger toll on my physical and mental health than I thought it would. I promise you that climbing as a solo support player in low elo is possible. As much as you may think it's not, please use me as an example. And I hope these tips can really help somebody out there. That's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you for watching, and good luck climbing. You're gonna need it. See ya.